On August 4th, there was a massive explosion at the port in Beirut, Lebanon. Cell phones caught the blast from almost every angle. Videos spread through social media and messaging platforms almost immediately. Some were real, some were manipulated. A few appeared to show a missile striking just before the blast. These videos were doctored. When investigative reporter Emmanuel Saliba received one of those videos from a source in Beirut, she knew she had to get to work. As an investigative reporter, my role is to try and figure out what caused the explosion in this case. So I got in touch with someone who owns a business at the Port of Beirut. His family has been operating there for 40 years. And in this exchange, he said, let me send you a video. I think a missile caused the explosion. I was already pretty skeptical because I had seen some um, fairly easily debunkable videos out there. So what we're looking at here is the first video that came out that was manipulated. What's interesting in this case is it's an original witness video. So we're actually seeing the scene, but what the person did was add a missile. And I'll show you uh, the original video, which is this one. What's great now about what's happening online is that as soon as a manipulated video comes out, there's so many journalists who are trained to do this that very quickly um, they are being debunked. So a colleague at the BBC who, who focuses on disinformation, he debunked it. And we're all sort of, you know, even though we work for different outlets, all looking at each other's work and helping each other out. So I had that in my head when I was talking to my source and I thought, you know, we already debunked a video. I'm pretty skeptical about this one, send it to me. He sent it to me through WhatsApp and he said he got it from friends and families, you know. Imagine his business has been destroyed. They want answers. They want to know what caused the explosion. I looked at the video and it's, it's an infrared video. I'm going to show you a version that is here that still lives on Twitter. I'll play it for you so you can see. You can tell that these are two videos that have been edited together to make it appear as if it's one continuous shot. But just by looking at it, anyone could sort of see that they're taken from two different angles. There's also this thermal imaging layer, which yep. is a bit strange, uh, considering that the video camera falls to the floor and it you can see it was taken by a human being. What human being has an infrared camera? This is a professional piece of gear. Right, the video is shaky, no security footage would have come out that quickly given the strength of the explosion. So you just start like piecing these things together. I recognized this first shot and I knew that it was taken by um, a social media editor, media editor who was actually on the ground who works for CNN. And here's the original video. You see, it doesn't have that filter. Um, and when you play it out, you can see that there, there isn't a missile that comes through the sky and hits. So that was added. I spoke to him and he said, yeah, my video was taken, manipulated. And I kept getting all these emails about uh, the supposed missile in my video, which you can see isn't there. And quickly after, Twitter actually put out an event and they said, fa to show that fact checkers had concluded that the video of the Beirut explosion was doctored and it included a fake missile and they featured my tweet and my thread I did on it. And they also featured a few other reporters that had um, also been doing that a similar type of debunking work. So it's important for us to really be quite quick to dismiss these and quite, quite quick to, to debunk them and really show people how we do it, right? It's easy to say this isn't real, but we need yeah. people to understand why and how it's not real. So I actually wrote back to him and I laid out my steps and said, here's, how I know it's it's not real. And he's like, okay, that's so great to know. I'm gonna tell all my friends and my family. And it's really helpful, I think, uh, if you're an individual to create a list with all of these um, you, different journalists and so that you can monitor them during breaking news. Build your own little stable of experts that you trust that are verified. And that way you might see that what you're about to share actually showed up here as something that you shouldn't. Exactly. The August 4th blast in Beirut was devastating. 
lives were lost, thousands were injured, billions of dollars of damage was done. We all wanted to know how did this happen? We got explanations immediately, but reliable news takes time. So what do we do when information travels faster than facts? Build a list like Emmanuel recommends. Find journalists you trust and follow them. Then, when big news breaks, and if 2020 has taught us anything, it most surely will break, you'll already know who to go to. Until next time, keep it real, don't spread fake news. I'm Hari Srinivasan, and this is Take on Fake. Thanks for watching. For more in-depth investigations like this one, follow our guest Emmanuel Saliba on Twitter. You can find a link in the description. Let us know what you think in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe so you know when the next episode of Take on Fake drops.